street. Yeah. street. Yeah. Make your opening statement? Yes, I am, Your Honor. My client has filed a paternity suit to obtain child support from the father of the child. And where is the alleged father of the child? I wish I could tell you that, Your Honor, but we... Be- <laughs> Your Honor, this is the defendant, Carl DeTooth Williams. Mr. Williams, is this your attorney? No, he's just hanging. <laughs> then are you handling yourself? Uh, well, not right now. You know, it's kind of hard to get to with the pic, you know. <laughs> now, Mr. Williams, what I want to know is will you be acting as your own lawyer? Well, as the famous scholar Leon Sphinx has said, any boxer who represents himself has a fool for a client. So you will be representing yourself? Basically. <laughs> your Honor, I'd like to call Carl the Tooth Williams to the stand without Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> uh, please. Raise your right hand. your right hand. Oh, oh, it's great, it's great. Your other right. Uh, uh, Skip it. Do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? It's all good. Your Honor, I will prove that this man was intimate with my client the night of May the 8th, the Snooty Fox Motel on Crenshaw. Oh, see, that's the lock. I see the snooty fox is on Western. No, actually, it's on Vermont. Please continue. I thought I saw it. Continue. Uh, Mr. Williams, my client was the card girl at your bout against Razor Ruddick. Do you recognize her? Uh, look, man, sometimes within that whole round, I was knocked into a coma. So, you know, I don't really, you know. And when did you come out of that coma? <laughs> uh, very soon, hopefully. <laughs> Okay. If it pleases the court, I'd like to show you exhibit A. <laughs> A is for apple, J is for jack, cinnamon toasted apple jack. Burger, get to the point, please. You need a good breakfast, and that's where it's at. Mr. Harris. All right, start it off with apple jacks. All right, now look. This bra was found on the floor in your hotel room. Explain that to us. Can you do that? Well, after... Explain it, man! Hey, brother, it's all good. Well, basically, see, what had happened was is that we ran out of coffee filters, and I said, hey, look, what you doing with that on around your chest, Aaron? And so we used that, and then, you know, I had told her that my nipples were, uh, had dilated, and I needed, uh... I needed... I needed... I needed some circumference. the truth. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> you weep for Santiago because he had no code. He had no honor. <laughs> now can I go now? Mr. Harris, get on track, please. If it pleases the court, I'd like to recreate the event of that evening. If it please me, I would like for you to uh, cooperate the, the same uh, prostination. Would the plaintiff please approach the bench, please? Come on. You're all right. Like it's all right. It's the night of May the 8th, 1992. Damn, I'm still writing checks and putting 1977 on them. I got to <laughs> I knew they were sending the checks back for some. The two of you checked into the Snooty Fox Motel. Anyway, Erko. You went into the... <laughs> Your Honor, 
I will admit that Urkel is about my age now. <laughs> you went into the Snooty Fox under the name Carl the Tooth Williams. As you had mentioned, that is ridiculous. Why would I make up a name like that? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, that is your real name. In this country. <laughs> Besides the fact that you look like you've been chewing on black jelly beans, what happened next? I'll tell you what happened. He took me up to my room and everything happened so quickly. I mean, the whole thing lasted maybe two minutes. I was down for a quick count. <laughs> After the fight is what the hell we're talking about here. Is that what we're talking That's about? That's what we're talking about. Well, step on. At the hotel. <laughs> well, after the fight, she, you know, she was coming at me pretty hard. She was hitting below the belt. But I stuck with my strategy. I was sticking and moving, sticking and moving. <laughs> so, from what I can tell, he is admitting that he had relations with my client. No, we just had sex. <laughs> Your Honor, I rest my case. Anybody in their right mind can see that this child was fathered by the tooth. Oh, no, see, this can't be my child because Jerry Carroll ain't wet it down. It's all dried up. He ain't got no teeth in his head. What's going on? Hey! Come on, Chu. Man, I think he got me with a sucker punch, man. I need a rematch. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Come on. The wind on, the From the makers of Philadelphia, the story of one man's struggle to stay out of the closet, San Francisco. Mr. Beckett, we used to consider you a top flight attorney at this firm. We'd give you a job and you'd get right on it. But lately you've been careless and sloppy. What are you talking about? You misplaced the files for the Liberace estate. <laughs> Last night, you claim that you were with a client and we got these photos of you. You care to explain that? That's my friend Frank. He looks great in a dress. Oh, really? Maybe you'd like to explain that little white mark there on your finger. That's why I wear my college ring. Isn't that the traditional wedding ring finger of a breeder? Breeder? Breeder. Breeder, 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 breeder. Sing us the first act finale from Phantom. Mm. I can't remember. Of course you can't remember because you never saw it. How many heterosexuals does it take to screw in a light bulb? That's not funny! I told you he was straight. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Beckett, your services are no longer required. Are you saying I'm fired? Bitch, did I stutter? <laughs> I need an attorney. I've been fired by my law firm, Nelson Tenderloin and Sugarstain. I need someone who can think like them and get inside their heads, play their games. Someone like you, RuPaul. <laughs> Am I that obvious? Well, yeah, kind of. Well, you're cute. I'll take your case. Thank you. Listen, what was the real reason why you think you got fired? Well, they found out I was straight. <laughs> Tom Hanks and RuPaul, starring in San Francisco, coming out to a theater near you. Dozens Tournament of Champions. Now entering our studio, a five-time champion from Uptown New York, T-Dog Jenkins. Another five-time champion from Houston's Fifth Ward, Anthony Clark. And last year's Dirty Dozens Tournament champion from Compton, California, Damian Foosball Franklin. Dirty Dozens, Stu Dunphy! Thank you so much. Hello and welcome to the Dirty Dozens Tournament of Champions. What's up, Stu? T-Dog in the house. How are you, my friend? I just seen you last week, man. We see you here every week. How's your mom? She doing fine. How's the colitis? He all right. All righty. 
We are present at the Dirty Dozens game board where talking trash can get you cash, and you might be the champ if your mom is a tramp. <laughs> now, let's look at our categories. Is your mom is so bald, your mom is so fat, mom is so stupid, and American authors. T Dog, you won the coin toss, start us off. I think I would take your mama so stupid for 100. Let's have a look. Your mama is so stupid. Uh, yeah, Anthony. Yeah, uh, your mama is so stupid she tripped over a cordless phone. <laughs> and you're on the board. Pick again. How about mama so fat for 100, Stu? Classic category. Your mama is so fat. T Dog. Your mama is so fat she look like she's smuggling Volkswagen. <laughs> Mama's a big old greasy hoe. <laughs> Alrighty, T Dog, need a category. I think I will go with American authors for 100 students. New category. Born in 1804, Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote such classic fiction as The Scarlet Letter and The House of the Seven Gables. For $100, how stank was his mama? Foosball. Nathaniel Hawthorne's mother was so stank, she sweated black flag. <laughs> Correct. I'll even at a C spot. Foosball, pick a square. I'll take your mother so fat for 200, Stu. Your mama's so fat. Your, ma your mama's so fat, she wakes up in sections. The underground don't stop for hoes. Let's go with your mama so bald then. For 200, your mama's so bald. Foosball. Your mama's so bald, she blow dry hair like that. <laughs> Yes. Foosball, pick a category. Uh, I'll take American authors for 200, Stu. All righty, listen carefully, Foosball. <laughs> Author and humorist Samuel Clemens wrote the classic Tom Sawyer under his better-known pseudonym. What was that pseudonym, and how big was his mama's butt? <laughs> Anthony. Yeah, Mark Twain and his mama's butt was so big, if you put your ear up to it, you can hear the ocean. <laughs> You have control of the board. I'll take Mama so fat for 300 stew. T Dog, break them off something. You too much, man. <laughs> Your mama so fat she got stretch marks on her clothes. Yes. Pick another. Oh, and that's the end of the first round. Let's reveal the final squares of tonight's mystery disc. Gentlemen, peep this. Foosball. Your mother's so fat, the back of her neck looks like a pack of hot dogs. Yes, for 300. Foosball, you and T Dog are tied. Anthony will say goodbye to you. It's time for your mama's wheel of sudden death. It's time for your mama's wheel of sudden death. You know the rules. I spin the wheel. Whatever body part it lands on, that's where you have to direct your diss. T Dog. Teeth. Your mama's so toothless, it takes an hour to eat minute rice. <laughs> Foosball, your turn. Eyes. Your mama's so blind, she got eyes on her butt and still can't see squat. Oh, I'm sorry, Foosball. You use the word eyes, but technically that's a butt diss. And that makes T Dog our winner. <laughs> Congratulations, T-Dog. You've certainly come a long way. Now you can stop here and take home your winnings or face the final test and become a true Dirty Dozens Grandmaster. Are you willing to risk it all, double or nothing, and go for greatness? You'll be facing off with the all-time Dirty Dozens Hall of Fame champion, Ed O'Neill! Who is this loser? Oh, are you trying to step to me, huh? Hey, I have a girl who does that for me. Yeah, come on, Christy Love. What's the call? Back off, Nitro. T-Dog, chill. 
U N I T Y. Yeah. I love you in coffee. <laughs> She's a rough chick. Now, you'll have to settle your differences on the field of dozens. T Dog, you've got 60 seconds to diss our champion's mama so badly he gets his butt out of the Royal Barca Lounger chair. This is for the championship. 60 seconds on the clock. Ready? Begin. Your mama's so fat, she got a job at Magic Mountain pushing the Buccaneer. Your mom is so fat after sex, she smokes turkeys. <laughs> She's so fat, after making love to her, I roll over twice and I'm still on her. <laughs> Your mama's so stupid, she was filling out a job application that says sign here, she put Sagittarius. Well, your mom is so ugly, Ted Danson wouldn't date her. <laughs> your mom is so fat, she plays hopscotch like this. L.A., Chicago, <laughs> New York, Chicago. <laughs> Your mama is so stupid, she gave your uncle because he said it would help his unemployment. <laughs> yeah, well, your mama's glass is so thick, when she looks at a map, she can see people waving. <laughs> and your mama's nose is so big, you can go bowling with her boogers. And your mama's so fat, before God said, let there be light, he told her, move your big butt out of the way. <laughs> I'm you for that one, man. What's oh, up? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, Ladies you and gentlemen, the champion maintains his throne. Congratulations. Ladies, send him home to his big, fat, stinking mama. <laughs> we don't love them hoes. <laughs> for tonight. Join us the next time on the Dirty Dozens. You know, a lot of times we like to do these closings and do jokes and be crazy, man. I just want to say I love you guys. Thanks for supporting me, man. I love you and every one of you. Good night.